So we need to think seriously. You are government, yes, but sometimes bring free minds. Join hands with free thinkers. Ask them what they think. At the end of the day, life is a problem solving experience. Life is about solving problems each and every time. <clears throat> There's no life that has no challenges. We always face challenges, one or another. And we need to keep on moving. We cannot stop. Now, COVID-19 should be an excuse that should stop the world economy. Particularly we in Africa. We are vulnerable because our economy is already devastated. Our economy, we always carry it on the head each and every day. Our economy is hand to mouth every day. We cannot afford to stop it. We cannot afford to stop the economy. If it means all Africa died, well, let it be. But God himself who made us as creator of mankind did not say COVID-19 will finish the whole race of Africa. No. There will be some that will survive. But by the time those that remain to survive, they should find the economy a step forward. They must find the economy at least moved up. Let us not give a burden to the remaining generation. Let us not burden the generation that is coming where they will have no way to start because we stop the economy for fear of COVID-19. I was talking about second class citizens. Africans, we are not second class citizens. We are first class citizens. By creation, by nature, we are the creator of mankind. But we have the stupidity of believing in myth Something that they tell us, something that they tell us, we believe in that. I heard in Malawi, the Chinese have opened a school. Everything that is happening in that school, you watch it in Al Jazeera. It's Chinese. Culture, Chinese. Language, Chinese. Food, Chinese. Lifestyle, Chinese. Many children are complaining that because I'm an orphan, what will I do? I'll still be here and be Chinese because I'm a Malawian without any direction. And this should give the government of Malawi shame. How would we allow to sell your people just because of poverty? How would you accept to sell your, the souls of Malawi to be learning a different culture altogether? Are you telling us that these children, after all the school and everything, they are going to live in China? No, they are going back to my village. Are they going to manage to join back into the culture of Africa in those Malawi villages? The answer is totally no. Then what have you done? What have you done? Governments should learn. If begging for money makes you so stupid, if begging for life makes you to be second class citizens, the best is just leave those governments. Bring other people that will teach their children that you are an African, you will always be an African, and you have to leave Africa. Because that's reality, that's utopianism. Don't cheat people. Don't lie and don't take advantage of their orphanage and teach them things that are impossible, things that are not in their lifestyles. Because at the end of the day, after this school, that they are Chinesizing themselves, they will still go back to the village where they will find Malawi culture there, standing. They are going to be strangers in their own country. Let us not accept this. Fellow citizens, we are faced with COVID-19. Today is Mandela Day. We have to make sure the legacy grows and continues. But we have many, many, many histories and legacies to learn or to pursue as Africans. I will come with a, a quote of my mentor, brother, leader, king of kings, colonel, colonel Muhammad Gaddafi. He said, they will come, they will create diseases to kill you, and they will come back with medicine after they see that your population is down. That was Muhammad Gaddafi in 20, 2007. When you had a meeting somewhere in Silt, 
Today we are faced with COVID-19. The words of Muammar Gaddafi has come to pass. Now it is in you, an African, in me, an African, to think, are we living life or we are pretending? Are we living life or we are Dandahids that do not believe in the teachings of our ancestors? Because that is a school of thought. And all of you who know about Libya will agree with me that Gaddafi was a visionary. Only that, this word that comes in the word of democracy, we misunderstand it. We misuse it, we confuse it. Today, Libya, as we knew it, is no longer Libya. It's a ruins. Libya that was blossoming in development, Libya that was glittering in its infrastructure, today it's a ruin or museum. Everything that you see in Libya are old things. The Libya of Gaddafi is being cried for. Africa wants the same Libya back. If, despite being cleared of mankind, if we had the power of giving life back to our people, we would want to give back the life to Muammar Gaddafi, to come back and restore Libya, and restore Africa, and encourage Africa, and fight for Africa. Alas, we don't have that power at all, despite being cleared of mankind. I go to Ghana. Today is a day of legacies of great men. Kwame Nkrumah said, the independence of Ghana will not have any meaningful ch uh, space or chance of freedom if the entire Africa is not free. We believe today, thanks to Senegal for opening your airspace and opening your borders. Thanks to Nigeria for opening your spare space and borders. We have heard that 17 July, Botswana also opened each airspace. That is thinking. That is thinking. We cannot close the world. We cannot close the, world, the African continent because of a disease that is hiding itself in the air. We will not manage. At the end of the day, I want to say something to governments of South Africa and the other countries that have locked down the economy. These very same people are going to turn against you. And you know what? Politics is a game of numbers. You will need these very same people to vote for you in 2024. The life they are living now is very tough they will not be able to come back and vote for you. The best we should do, let us leave the words of our ancestors, our founding fathers, Nelson Mandela as his day to his today, Kwame Nkrumah, Muhammad Gaddafi, and Thomas Sankala, my brother. If we can emulate something from these leaders, Africa will be free from COVID-19, free from economic shutdown, free from oppression, free from turning this way, turning this way. Africa will never go west, will never go east, will never go south, will never go north, but Africa will move forward, as Kwame Nkrumah's words. And this is what we need to do. This is the time. The generation of today is not going to watch because today generation of Africa know that we are created of mankind. We are the people that began living and breathing. Why are we poor? That's a question mark that each and every child of Africa is asking himself today or herself. Why? Because of that, Africans are thinking more than the Western people, more than the Eastern people. Africans are thinking and you will find that this is time of critical thinking. Everyone is critically thinking and many governments will turn against their people because you think their critical thinking is against you. No, we are not against you. We want to be part of you in moving this Africa forward. We want to be part of you in moving this continent forward. 
Because our ancestors, our founding fathers told us that we are not going to go west or east. We are not going to move either south or north. But we want to move Africa forward. And that's what everybody is aiming from today, for, for now. We are all yearning for moving forward. Now I have an advice to give to political parties of Africa, particularly liberation movements, SWAPO, ANC, Frerimo, MPLA, ZANU, KANU, TANU. You are freedom fighters that gave freedom to Africa. Exactly. And we thank you for that. But if you do not root out corruption, if you do not root out nepotism, if you do not root, root out lies and deceptions, making people to believe the myth that we just discussed here about your political foundations, you should know the next elections you are going to face massive, massive, massive challenges where not all of you are going to make it. Many of you are going to lose because the generation of today is not going south. It's not going north, it's not going west, it's not going east, it's going forward. Because the COVID-19 and the corruption and this changing of faces west and east, whereby the westerners are dumped and we go to China and we face a lot of challenges, the generation of today have realized that our policy makers are blind people. Our thinkers that we think they are thinkers are wrong. By that, Africans wants to join the thinking tank to start planning for our future. And you never take them down because the population of today, 60% of Africa are the youth. They are the utopian philosophy. People that believe in realism, not ideology. People that believe in what they see, not what they hear. People that believe in what they can, excuse me, what they can do with their hands, not what one can give them. That's where the danger is. Now your government believe in handouts. You silence the people by giving them handouts. Today an African won't not handouts. An African wants to toil. Because in our national anthem, there is that we toil. Meaning that Africa believe in sweating with his hand her hand to make something so that we can be proud people. As our Genesis said, we are credo of mankind. We are not second class citizens. We are credo of mankind. We, life began here. When life began in Africa, it shows that we have to be thinkers. We have to be doers. We have to be planners. And by the end of the day, we need to make sure all myths are pushed aside. All ideologies are pushed aside. We bring our own realism. Thank you very much. This was uh, the public lecture of today as Mandela Day. So we had to share this. You are all great people. Africa, rise up. Africa, rise up. We are cradle of mankind. Thank you. Mm.